Good evening and welcome to yet another awesome session of Mindful Living. We truly appreciate your taking out time and joining the session today. I promise that I'll do my best to make this investment of 90 minutes truly worth your while. Like all sessions of Mindful Living, this session is dedicated to improving your quality of life. Just allow me a minute. Uh, just give me a minute. Thank you, friends. Like all sessions of Mindful Living, this one is dedicated to improving your quality of life. And I'm glad that you have taken out time on a weekend to invest in improving your leadership qualities. Your, your joining the session today is a clear demonstration of your intention to emerge as a clear leader, as a better leader. Is it okay if I ask you a question? Please type Y in the chat if it is okay for me to ask you a question. Thank you, Richard. Bamel, Anjana. So friends, let me ask you, do, do you believe that good leaders add a lot of value to our lives, to the companies that we work in, or to the community that we live in or in sports or in technology all right and do you agree that good leaders are in short supply if you agree good leaders are in short supply please type y in the chat box friends everything that i'll be sharing in the session today will be all backed by research this is not only my feeling but you know, even Harvard Business Review says that good leaders are in short supply and we will see more as we go along. When we think of leadership, we tend to think of it in terms of a title a person holds or a position a person holds. But leadership is more about a mindset. It is about taking that responsibility. And in our session today, we will understand what is it that we can do, each one of us can do to become a better leader. And that could involve becoming a better leader to lead oneself better, becoming a better leader to lead our families better, to lead our teams better, to lead our organizations better, or whatever endeavor of life we may be in. That is what we are going to explore today and how that can add value to our lives. So the session today is for anyone who is working in the corporate sector and wants to increase their income. Uh, if you are a business person or uh, a professional working in corporate sector, and if you want to increase your income, please type me in the chat box. Or if you are someone who has got great potential, but you think that it is not uh, being tapped fully, uh, please type me in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is that is how many of us feel. And my last question here today on this slide is, are you committed to do something about it? Because a lot of us uh, feel that, you know, it would be better if I earn more or it would be better if I am, uh, you know, whatever else, but are we committed? So type C, if you are committed to improve your income or committed to take action to improve your quality of life, to improve your career. Thank you, friends. I'm so happy to see that, that we have got such a committed uh, bunch of uh, participants in the session today. So in the next 90 minutes, I will take you through how you can develop expertise to grow in your career and your business, even if you have been stuck at the same level for multiple years. How can you become a courageous and confident leader in any situation, especially in meetings with upper management and clients, even if you call yourself an introvert? and how you can increase your income by 30 to 60% even if your current company or the market does not have growth opportunities 
you know, to back that up. And as I mentioned earlier, everything that I say is backed by evidence. And this is the testimonial of uh, Manoj Nair, who got a job uh, after being out of employment with a hike of 50%. You know, normally, the, if you have been in the corporate sector and you would agree with me that if somebody, if someone loses a job, then getting a next one is at a pay cut compared to what you were getting earlier. But because uh, Manoj went through uh, coaching with me, he worked on himself. He got the next job with a 50% hike. Manoj is a speaker on Mindful Living platform. So you can go and check him out there. He's also a member of the Mindful Living community. So you can connect with him and get to know, validate this story yourself. So this is the kind of work that we do at Mindful Living. Uh, for those of you who are attending the session for the first time, uh, I'll take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Ashish Kumar and I am the founder of Mindful Living. Uh, we started Mindful Living Community in April 2020 when the first lockdown took place. Few of my friends reached out to me to uh, conduct sessions on mindfulness to help them deal with the stress and anxiety that uh, the lockdown was causing. Uh, so over a weekend, I conducted a session for them. One thing led to other. And today we are a vibrant community of thousands of people who support each other in living consciously. We don't advertise about the work we do. So the only way you can get uh, uh, join this community is when somebody invites you to join. And today I would like to extend this invitation to you in case uh, you are uh, first time attending a Mindful Living session or watching this video, uh, please click on the uh, QR code given here to join the community or to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which has got over 200 videos uh, on how to live healthy, happy and wealthier lives. I'm a certified mindfulness meditation teacher, a certified trainer, a coach, and by education, and I'm an MBA from SIBM Pune, cost accountant, and a fellow of Life Management Institute. I have worked for over 25 years in corporate sector with leading organizations like Xerox, Tata AIA, Future Generali, Marsh India, and with HCL Healthcare and Healthcare at Home. I regularly conduct uh, training sessions, leadership training sessions for uh, top-notch blue chip organizations in India, some of whose names you see here. I am also a mentor to students of I am Nagpur. So friends, that's in brief uh, about me. And uh, as we go along the session, I request you to keep your cameras on and use the reactions button to uh, uh, respond if something that I share resonates with you. We will open up the session for question and answers towards the end of the session. But in the meanwhile, you can stay actively engaged using the reactions button. So it is my process to you that if you stick with me for the next 60, 75 minutes, I will show you a step-by-step -step process that is proven to help you grow in your career and business to get recognition and grow your income by 50% or more. All this may sound far-fetched at this time, uh, but as you go through the entire presentation and hear stories of my clients, you will realize that this part to reach high income and position is not only possible, it can be very simple. And you can achieve this without the need for working long hours, without the need for slogging on weekends or taking time away from your family. All of this you can achieve. You can uh, be better performing at your career, earn more, at the same time, improve your relationships with your family and with friends and everyone around. So focus on this important matter of your growth. And I request you to turn off everything else that you may be doing because the next 60 to 75 minutes are extremely important. Please take your notepad and take notes as we go through. And I share this seven step formula, which will help you uh, become better, happier, and wealthier. So if you are someone who is working too hard, long hours, you know, not having enough time for the family, getting exhausted, feeling burnt out, uh, you know, have this feeling of stress and anxiety, then this session is for you. If you feel very painful because, uh, you know, you're not get, getting ahead in your career and even in the amount you may have invested in your expensive MBA is not helping you get ahead in life. 
and you see other people who are half as qualified as you are work, earning double the income, uh, then you know definitely you are at the right place. And I have some good news for you that the real problem is that you have not yet made the mindset shift that one needs to do. And as Albert Einstein says that we cannot solve the problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. So the, what essentially he is trying to say is, if we want different results, we need to think differently. So are you ready to create different results in your life? Please type R if you're ready to create different results in your life. Thank you, Bamil. Thank you. Thank you, Asmita. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everybody. All of you are very result-oriented, very happy to see that. So let's move on. And once you make these uh, shifts, you will unleash your inner superpower and destroy all limiting beliefs which keep us uh, stuck in the past and grow faster than you ever thought possible. You will start showing up at meetings with more power and talk with more confidence and people will notice that there is something different about you. And you know, once you make these shifts, you will start getting bigger responsibilities, raise and bonuses. Let me ask you a question. I live in Pune and if I want to go to Bombay, should I ask someone who has already been there or ask someone who has never traveled to Bombay earlier? Uh, so type in the chat if I should ask someone who has already been there or someone who has never traveled there. Already we said, thank you, Satyas. Thank you, Satya. Already been there. Thank you, Richard. So once you follow these shifts, yeah, I am waiting for response from others. Leaders, please respond. I'll repeat my question. If I want to go, I live in Pune. Who's already been there? Thank you, friends. So when, you know, when you have to learn about making these mindset, mindset shifts, which will help you earn, start, you know, when, which will help you earn 70 lakhs to one crore rupees, you listen to someone who is already earning that kind of money because, you know, the person has lived. Uh, thank you, Asmita. Thank you, Venkateshwara. Thank you, Anjana. And I'm very happy to share my income tax returns. You know, last year I paid taxes of 18, nearly 18 lakh rupees. So I'm already earning this kind of money, which I'm talking about, uh, uh, you know, that you can earn once you make this. So that, that's the proof that I want to share with you. you. You take luxury vacations. This is my picture with my family from a trip to Europe that we made last year. Uh, you will have enough funds to provide for your uh, kids' uh, college education, for your retirement. You'll have time to play with them and also uh, have date time with your loved one. So you will have time, you will have prosperity, you will have abundance, not only of the money, but also of time. You will be successful without being stressful. That's the promise I would like to make to you. Many of us, you know, are uh, very busy. Uh, many corporate professionals I work with regularly, uh, they are very anxious, uh, full of, you know, they panic, uh, but once you make these shifts, uh, you will realize that there are people, and I'm sure you know people in your organizations or in your network, in your social circles, uh, who uh, don't work as hard as we do. They leave at like 6 p.m. Uh, they are very calm, irrespective of the stress, and they still continue to grow uh, in their career. So earlier when I was in corporate sector, I would work like very long hours and still remain stuck at the same level. But I would see people who are leaving office at six and having uh, enjoying their sports, enjoying their family time and still growing in their career. So I closely observed what these people were doing and I noticed that there are some things that these people do which are different. And I discovered there are seven things that these superstars do that everybody else not uh, does not do. And as I started implementing those shifts, my growth started seeing an immediate impact. And for last couple of years, I have made it my life's mission to help others achieve the highest success in their careers without stress using the exact same strategies 
which I am just about to share with you. So tighten your seat belts, get ready as I present the first one to you that will help you become unstoppable and invincible. Please type you and I if you would like to be unstoppable and invincible. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Anjana. Thank you, Bamil. Thank you, Venkateswaram. Thank you, Ashmita. Thank you, Satya. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your being so responsive, my dear friends. This really means, thank you, Ashish. This really means your being responsive really means it, it's a sign of leadership also. So the first is developing a champion's mindset. And I'm going to show you a scene from a movie. Please tell me which movie is this and what is Amitabh Bachchan trying to do in this scene. Some of you may have seen the movie or you may be familiar with. Some of you may not have been. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, Satya. I'm not sure if that's a right one, but please go on. Yeah. Anybody else? Which which movie is this scene from and what is Amitabh Bachchan trying to do? Amar Akbar Anthani. Thank you, Anjana. Mm -hmm. What is Amitabh Bachchan trying to do? You can unmute yourself and speak. Healing himself in the image. Thank you. What is Amitabh Bachchan trying to do? Please unmute and share with us. Do you want to see the image or uh, you have seen it in a like healing himself by looking at, okay, okay, Bamil. So what Amitabh Bachchan is trying to do is very interesting in this, you know. He's trying, he's hurt himself but he is putting the band-aid on the image he's seeing in the mirror, you know. And think of it in the context of our lives. If we have to heal, if I am hurt, and if I need to heal myself, I need to put the band-aid here, you know. But what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to heal. I, I can't see myself, so I'm trying to heal what I can see. So this is how we lead our lives. Always trying to fix the person we see uh, other than us, you know, outside us in our world. It could be our boss, it could be our colleague, it could be our spouse, relatives, anybody else. We are in this fixing mode. We are trying to fix somebody else without realizing that the problem lies within me, not in others. And this is how, uh, you know, the victims lead their lives always trying to blame others uh, or making excuses or denying the existence of the problem. Whereas those who are uh, victors, they take ownership, accountability and responsibility. And this is a very powerful mindset shift, whether I am a victim or a victor. Most of the people knowingly or unknowingly go through their lives thinking that they are powerless, they are helpless, and they can't do anything about uh, uh, you know, the situation they are in. But the champions, the champions are those who believe that irrespective of how bad the situation may be, there is always something that they can do. They take responsibility uh, and they do what they can do. You have heard of Fy Michael Phelps. If you have heard of Michael Phelps, please type Y in the chat. Yeah, Satya, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. So Michael Phelps is, uh, you know, won 28 uh, Olympic gold medals. And once when he was in an Olympic race, uh, his uh, goggles malfunctioned and the water entered in his goggles as a result of which he could not uh, see, uh, you know, uh, while swimming. So he can't see how far he needs to go, how fast others are going. He was just blinded. And in this situation, anybody can lose their cool 
but there was only one thing that Michael Phelps had control over. You know, he can't stop the race. He can't call his coach. He can't ask for the replacement of goggles. There is only one thing which he has a control over, which is to keep swimming. And in that moment, he decided that he will take control and he will only he'll continue doing what he can do. In a seemingly hopeless situation, you know, the high stake environment of Olympic final race, he just continued swimming, uh, you know, as he would have otherwise, and he eventually won the race. So this is what champions are about, being focused on what is it that they can control and always remaining there rather than worrying about what has gone wrong and blaming other people for it. You know, he could have blamed somebody else, but rather than blame, that's not going to help him win the race. What will help him win the race is to stay focused on what he can do. And uh, I would like to, uh, you know, bring this part uh, to a close by talking about uh, this, mentioning this beautiful movie, Pursuit of Happiness. Have you seen this movie, Pursuit of Happiness? Uh, please type P-O-H if you have seen the movie Pursuit of Happiness. <coughs> okay, Richard has seen, Bommel has seen. Okay. <coughs> so for those who have not seen, I'll uh, share the story briefly. It's it's, ba it's based on a true uh, uh, event, you know. Chris Gardner is the character who is uh, portrayed by Will Smith in the movie. And Chris Gardner uh, uh, was a very poor man, you know, single father and homeless. You know, he didn't have any money. He didn't have any home. And uh, he would live with his son in a, the, you know, every night going from one shelter home to another shelter home. And one night it so happens that they don't uh, get uh, any place to sleep. So what does one do with the kid? You know, you can't. So he goes to a metro station and he spends the night in the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Richard. He spends the night locking himself and his son inside the metro station, uh, inside the toilet, you know. And this scene is not there in the movie, but this is what Chris Gardner talks about in his interviews. So if you look up Chris Gardner on YouTube, you will find his interviews there. And he says that in one of those interviews, he says that night in which I spent in the toilet in the metro station, I looked at the mirror and I talk to myself. I said, if I can get myself into this situation, I can also get myself out of this situation. And that night, you know, th that he took that decision and his life changed. And eventually he became, uh, you know, he got a job with a very successful uh, stockbroking company. And then he became a stockbroker himself. And this man who was uh, homeless once eventually sold his company. Can you guess for how much? How much was his worth when he sold his company? How much did he get? Any idea? A homeless person, how much money how can he earn selling his company? You don't have to be right or wrong. Just a guess. Eight billion. Okay, Bhamal. This is, this is old. This is about maybe 20, 30 years back. Huh? Anybody else? Any guesses? Any guesses? How much would he have sold his stockbroking company for? A homeless man. How much can a homeless man make? Two crores. Okay. Five billion. Yeah, yeah. So just keep in mind that this is about 20, 30 years old. This is not today. So uh, he sold his company for $200 million, which is like 1,600 crores in today's terms. You know, a person who does not have a home to stay in, when he takes charge of his life and says that if I can get myself into this situation, I can get myself out of this situation. And then, you know, his life turns and then, you know, he gets a job and then he gets into he makes his own company and sells it for 1600 crores. If you think this is wow, uh, please type W. This is what happens when we take our responsibility for our lives, when we are focused on what we can do rather than blaming others. He could have blamed his ex-wife. He could have blamed anybody else. 
but he chose to take responsibility and be in a circle of control. That is what champions are made of, always focused on what they do. And I have prepared, uh, you know, at the end of the session today, I'm going to talk about a workshop that I have prepared for this. And in that, this first session uh, is very, very important. And that this, this, just this realization will make your investment in the workshop completely worth it while it's a very powerful session. We do a lot of work on limiting beliefs. What holds us back? How do you clear those limiting beliefs? And how can you uh, propel your life forward? And I, we share many case studies, many real life case studies like this, which help you in shifting the perspective. Are you ready for the next one? The next shift? Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, friends. If you're ready, yes, okay, thank you, friends. So now we'll move to the next one, and that, which is about creating a success blueprint. Dr. Stephen Covey says that everything that is created is created twice, first in the mind and then in our physical reality. So a blueprint is a map of the mind. You know, when we build a house, if you ask uh, your architect to build a house for you, he will not start construction unless the blueprint has been made and has been approved by you. No house is ever constructed without a blueprint. But imagine if we have to get a house done, which is one of the things we do in our life, we need a blueprint. But for our life, do we have a blueprint? Are we going through our lives with a blueprint or without a blueprint? So the second session is about, or the second habit or the second uh, you know, principle for success is creating a success blueprint. And which is where our ability to imagine comes into play. Uh, like an architect imagines this is how the house is going to look like. This is how your drawing room is going to look like. This is the picture that is going to be there. Uh, this is the color that's going to be there. You know, like we moved to Pura recently and we got our house done. And, you know, we just imagined everything that is going to be there, where the sofa is going to be placed, where the beds are going to be, where is the everything we imagine. And this imagination is a very powerful faculty. And, uh, you know, when we imagine great things can happen. Now, this guy, what do you see in this picture? You can unmute and speak. What are you seeing in this picture? Filling petrol. Filling petrol. Now, this guy, boy, young boy who's filling petrol, what do you think his future or his family's future can be? What will happen? How uh, will his son be like him or his son will be something different? His son will be different. Will be different, okay. Yeah, so, you know, mostly people take on their parents' professions and, you know, they kind of stagnate at the same level at which the parents are. But this young man is, uh, I would like to remind you of Dhirubhai Ambani, who was uh, a petrol pump attendant, okay? And when he was used, when he used to fill petrol like this boy is doing in this picture, he would imagine that one day he will own the refinery from which this petrol comes. That was his imagination. And imagination is more important than knowledge. That is what uh, Albert Einstein says. Dhirubhai Ambani did not have any knowledge of how to uh, make a petrol uh, petroleum refinery, but he just imagined. And when you imagine uh, magical things happen, and then you know all the resources which you need to create what you want uh, get available to you. Most of the times, and I speak for myself. Earlier, I used to be a lot of lot more focused on. Uh, intelligence question, you know, but what I have realized of late is more than intelligence question, it is imagination question uh, that we need. And if we can imagine our lives the way we would like it to be, and then work towards it, then great amount of magic is possible. So the kind of house that we want to live in, the car we want to drive, what kind of wealth we want to have, what kind of investments we want to have, what kind of health we want to have, what kind of relations, so many different areas of our life, which we can vividly uh, imagine and then start creating those results in our life. Why is imagination so important? It is important because uh, we have two uh, kinds of brains. One is our subconscious mind and a conscious mind. And our subconscious mind is about 90 to 95% of our uh, total mind. 
Uh, so it is far more po powerful than the conscious mind. And the subconscious mind tends to think in terms of images. So when we visualize, you know, our 95% of the brain gets active. Mm -hmm. And there is a reticular activation system in our brain, which then scans the environment and gets all the resources that we need uh, to make uh, those uh, you know, visualizations come true. Another thing that is interesting about subconscious mind is that it does not distinguish between what is... I'll request everybody to mute themselves. Uh, so, uh, what I was saying was uh, it aligns all the resources and uh, the subconscious mind is the more powerful part of the mind. Conscious mind is 10% say and subconscious mind is 90%. So, it's like nine times more powerful. And typically, if they are not aligned uh, to each other, you know, then a conscious mind may be thinking something else, but subconscious mind is thinking something else, then it is never bound to happen. But when we imagine both conscious and subconscious mind gets aligned and uh, magic happens, uh, you know, so that is the power of uh, subconscious. So our second session in the workshop is dedicated to visualizing uh, and we do guided meditations for that and we, you know, help you create a vision for yourself which then comes true and we will share testimonials for that too. And uh, then third one, this is often the number one challenge which people talk about is how to manage time. We are so overwhelmed these days. There is so much to do and such less time. Uh, so this is one thing which I often get asked, how do we get, manage our times? And for this, I will share the best time management system with you. Uh, and that starts with an understanding of what is urgent and what is important. Urgent is something which is being driven by somebody else. You know, please understand this. You know, anything that is urgent is either your customer is driving it or your boss is driving it or your daughter or your wife is driving it or your mom is pressing for it. Somebody else is driving it. It may not be priority for you. It is a priority for them. And they are saying you got to do it in this time. You know, where is important is something that is which is aligned with your goals and, uh, you know, initiatives that you want with your plan. But what gets priority, what gets priority is what the others want because it is urgent. They're standing on your head and demanding it. And what is important and what concerns me and my well-being is often pushed away. But when we align our lives, and this is what we discuss in the workshop, to the priorities that we have, the magic starts happening and your st life starts moving. And this is the uh, Eisenhower's time, uh, time management matrix, which I consider not only me, many other people. Yes, yes, Asmita. Uh, this is Eisenhower's, tower, uh, Eisenhower's time management matrix, which was uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Stephen Covey in his book. And in the resources, we will share a video link with you in which he explains this even further. Uh, so there will be resources which we will be emailing to you at the end of the session. So he says the quadrant two, which is not urgent but important, is uh, where the real growth opportunities lie. And it is uh, what are quadrant two activities? Relationship building, doing research to find new opportunities, planning for long term uh, versus the short term that we have got addicted to these days preventive activities, personal growth, and recreation, you know. This word is so important, recreation. Uh, it is not pleasure, it is recreation, doing things which will rejuvenate you. And the quadrant four is like uh, social media, your Instagram, Facebook, uh, which we get sucked into, and then we are not able to come out of it, and then, you know, we spend hours uh, just scrolling the reels, which don't add any value, time wasters, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, people go to astrologers to, uh, 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 you know, find out uh, what their future will be. You know, they show their uh, Janampatri, they show their hand, uh, palms to the... But I can tell the future of a person depending on what percentage of time they're spending uh, where, you know. So uh, if you are... Okay, let me ask you this question. Uh, reflect two, three minutes or maybe one or two minutes and share in the chat what percentage of time you are spending in quadrant two and what percentage of time you are spending in quadrant four in that order 
what percentage of time you're spending. Uh, so I'll give you some examples of quadrant two activities. Exercising would be quadrant two. Uh, taking out time to network with your friends or with uh, peers, colleagues, uh, building relationships in the organizations, not only going to people when you have work, but taking out time or doing research. Yeah, exercising, Bhamal, thank you. So what percentage of time is quadrant two in your current scheme of things? The time to you take out to make your vision, uh, to set your goals, uh, yeah, for your recreation, you know, like one of these CXOs I met, uh, I, I, you know, we were doing, we were trying to align a meeting. So he put up his calendar uh, to on the screen to share. And I saw there is a chill time in it, you know, on Friday evening. And I said, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anjana, for sharing that so honestly. Yeah, 2%, 10%, right? Okay, so uh, let us say that is uh, uh, representative of the group while we are waiting for others to answer. And let me ask you another question. How, you know, you would have seen leaders, you would have seen successful people in your life. How much time do you think they spend in quadrant two? Doing research, building relations, like <coughs> one of my teachers says that, <clears throat> The rich people don't go after net worth. They go after network. So they invest their time in building their network. So Anjana, okay, thank you for sharing 20%. Anybody else on how much time, uh, you know, successful people in your life, you know, they spend in quadrant two, building their networks, doing research on finding new opportunities, setting goals, one year, three year, five years goal. Bommel says 30%. Investing in your exercising, preventive activities, making processes, uh, learning, investing time and in developing. Like you are, you have taken out one and a half hours today to invest in your learning. So, you know, personal growth, investing in your learning. So uh, most of the successful people, they spend 50 to 70% of their time in quadrant two. I'm not saying that you get to quadrant 50% to 70% of time in quadrant two from tomorrow. But at least realize, uh, you know, for today that, you know, the more time you start spending, if you are at 2% or 10%, if you can be 3% or 11%, you are making progress in life. Uh, and, you know, the uh, quadrant four, you know, I also identify what is the time you are spending there and then reduce that time. So, the strategy, what is it that you will do once you have realized and we deep dive into this area in one full session of one and a half hours is, uh, you know, analyze how you're spending your time and what is in quadrant to either reduce it or completely drop it, depending on how emotionally mature you are, if you can drop it best. But And, you know, the one thing I decide uh, to do is... Uh, decide whether I want to spend time on this, whether uh, whether my spending time on watching reels is going to make money for me or for the person who has made the reel. And if it is going to make money for the other person, then why should I spend my time, you know, paying for him or for his income? So that is how I decide. I do watch, but I uh, use snooze button on my phone and watch for 10 minutes or if I find something very interesting, I snooze one more time and do it 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. But I, it's very regulated. I do watch, but I do watch very regulated manner. Quadrant three, what is not important but urgent? You know, some telephone call from the customer which needs to be attended right now. Uh, if you don't do it, you will lose that project. Delegate, you know. And quadrant one, urgent and important, do it now. And quadrant two, not urgent, important is schedule it. So if you, I was once working with a very senior banker, uh, uh, you know, he was my client and I saw, we were trying to schedule some activities. So I saw is he had something on his table called monthly activity schedule. And in that monthly activity schedule, what he used to do was every month at the beginning of the month, he will mark out his most important meetings and the most important things. All the quadrant two activities used to be marked out in a monthly uh, activity schedule he, at the start of the month. So those 
cannot be touched. Whatever else will need to come in, will need to fill in in the available balance time. So uh, what is urgent cannot overtake what is important. That is how, and you know, it was no wonder uh, that he was at such a senior uh, position. And uh, so I'll so pause here to see if it, this is making sense to you. And if you have any quick questions or comments, if this is making sense to you, please type MS in the chat. box. <laughs> Thank you, Bamal. Thank you, Satya. Thank you, Asmita. Thank you, Venteshwar. Thank you, Richard. Ashish ji, Naveen, Manoj, Jashri, uh, please respond. So, the, is there any quick question or comment you have before I move on? If it is good to move on, Please type MO, move on. Or if you have a question or comment, please. Okay, good, good to move on. All right. So the next one is about compassionate leadership. You know, this is the style of leadership which is more misunderstood than it is understood. But at the same time, it is very, very powerful. You know that kind of leaders uh, that we uh, hear about and sometimes they get glorified also are the ones who are whiplashing, uh, kick-ass, uh, bad-mouthing, uh, you know, kind of bosses. But we all would not prefer working with someone like that. You know, what we like to work with. If I uh, commonly I ask this question to people in my sessions is, uh, do you like a boss who was compassionate, who understood you, who respected you, or someone who, uh, you know, is wears shoes like this? Nobody wants to work with a boss who wears uh, shoes like this. And this one is a very interesting uh, quote from uh, Bill George, former CEO of Medtronic. And he says that, uh, you know, an authentic leader, a compassionate leader involves uh, making this transformation for, 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 you know, moving from I to V. Most of the times we are looking at the world from our perspective. We don't look at the world from a 360 degree perspective, which includes the other person also. And see then what he says, that this is the most important process leaders have to go through. How else can they unleash the power of their organizations unless they motivate their people to reach their full potential? And you can't expect people to reach their full potential if they are only following your instructions, but they are not thinking on their own. Uh, so this is a very beautiful uh, perspective uh, Bill uh, brings uh, to the leadership that when we are compassionate, we set people think, uh, free to think on their own, reach their full potential. And when individual reaches a full potential, organization also reaches full potential. Uh, then there is this uh, interesting uh, definition from uh, Tupten Jinpa on compassion, which is compassion is a mental state endowed with a sense of concern for the suffering of others and aspiration to see the suffering relieved. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, quotes which are uh, uh, floating about Ratan Tata these days. I worked with Tata, so I know uh, what kind of uh, values he led the organization with. And one of them is uh, people ask him, you know, you are uh, so, you lead such a big organization. Why are you not amongst the richest people? And he says, other people want to get rich, but I want uh, India to become happy. You know, I want people to become happy. That is the motivation with which we were, you know, and that is so true. And see, that does not stop you from, sometimes people think if you're compassionate, uh, you know, you can't grow, but Ratan Tata and the Tata group is a very good example of compassionate leadership. And uh, this is one which uh, is also my favorite uh, example of compassionate leadership, which is Captain Bill Swenson. And uh, he uh, he's being honored with the Medal of Honor uh, by President uh, or uh, Barack Obama. And he's only one of the six people uh, who have won uh, this Medal of uh, Honor uh, while being alive, you know, and the first one to win after the war of Vietnam. So what had happened was uh, he was leading a the contingent in uh, Afghanistan when they were attacked uh, by the terrorists and they started shooting indiscriminately and many of his soldiers got wounded. 
and uh, the terrorists wanted them to surrender, but Captain uh, Bill Swenson didn't yield to them and he kept fighting the terrorists. And, uh, you know, he uh, ordered medical evacuation for the people, soldiers who were falling, you know, got, getting hurt and um, you know, falling down. And on his own will, you know, he could have escaped easily, but because his, uh, you know, comrades were wounded and they were lying on the ground, he uh, went back and picked them up and got them out and he saved many, many lives of the people. And, you know, what, uh, this, this is not there in the citation, but uh, this is somewhere I read what actually uh, tilted uh, things in his favor was, you know, when they he was putting his comrades into the helicopter for evacuation, uh, you know, the uh, the person in the helicopter had a camera, and not only did his did he put his comrade on the helicopter, he gently planted a kiss on the forehead uh, of the soldier who was wounded. So this is just such a gentle, uh, you know, uh, gesture. Uh, when you are fighting for life and you can get killed anytime and he was going and picking up his uh, friends and soldiers when the shooting is going on, you know, and in that uh, scenario, imagine planting a gentle kiss on the forehead of your uh, soldier comrade uh, is such a gentle uh, thing. So, and he won this uh, Medal of Honor. So compassionate leadership works, it gets recognized, it is the most effective form of leadership. And there is immense research which has been done on this. Uh, Rasmus Hogard uh, did a research in which he conducted interviews with uh, thousands of executives, CXO level executives, and he found that uh, mindfulness and compassion are amongst the top three qualities of most successful people. Uh, so that is what compassionate leadership is about. We discuss case studies like this uh, in our session so that you get a 360 degree perspective on compassionate leadership. People think that uh, compassionate leadership does not work only when you kick people do people work. Uh, and, but we will share an alternative perspective for you, which will make you uh, fulfilled and which will make your team happier and it will make you feel uh, productive. both book of true north yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you richard <laughs> so the the next one that we focus on is the emotional drivers for increasing our uh, influence um, and emotion is uh, shakti emotion is power you know uh, when we tune in uh, to our emotions it opens up new guidance and uh, we don't often tune into our emotions because we do not really uh, understand them. We are not taught in schools uh, or our uh, colleges how to listen to our emotions, how to understand our emotions. But once we do, a whole new world of understanding opens up. I consider myself an emotional fool. For many years of my life, I went through not paying attention to my emotions. Uh, or to the emotions of other people. And the way this works is it is uh, it works in a layered system. Uh, and if one is not good at understanding one's own emotions, it is very difficult for a person to understand other person's emotions. So things like empathy don't happen. Emotional intelligence doesn't happen uh, because you're not tuned into your emotion. You can't tune into the other. And the third is understanding the emotion uh, in the uh, organizational context, which is sometimes also called politics, but I'm not talking to politics. It's just understanding the nuances of the environment. And we have seen that IQ, uh, uh, you know, we IQ is highly overrated. Uh, but if you are highly intelligent, but you can't handle your emotions, you can completely run yourself into the ground. Uh, this is a movie, but uh, in my coaching practices, I get people uh, who, uh, you know, high performers, star performers, but can't handle their emotions and they get suspended because of the, you know, whatever happens because of the behavior at the workplace. So if we can't handle our emotions, you know, it creates havoc in our life, whether it's relationships, personal relationships, or uh, professional relationships. And when, when I go to uh, colleges, uh, you know, one question people often ask is, what is it that we should focus on developing? And almost inevitably, my answer is, focus on developing emotional intelligence, because once you develop emotional intelligence, uh, 
yeah, then uh, you know you will really cruise through uh, your life a lot of us we place at least i can speak for myself i used to place a lot of importance on uh, intelligence you know uh, to get through uh, in my work uh, intelligence speed but what i realized over a period of time is that actually it is uh, emotional intelligence which is far more important uh, it is 85% uh, uh, responsible for producing stellar uh, results, you know, outperforming star results in the organization. 85% uh, responsibility is of emotional intelligence. Uh, intelligence accounts for only 15%. And emotionally intelligent leaders are far more effective. They are personally happy. They attract happy people to themselves. Teams product, produce so much more. Customers are handled better. So much happens. This is a this is a journal which is a very simple. Uh, five questions journaling exercise. You can take a screenshot of this. Uh, we will also be emailing the uh, this video uh, to you so you can watch it later and take a screenshot or write them down. This is an exercise. Uh, you know, my coach had asked me to do a couple of years back. I think it was 2020, December 2020. I had signed up for a coaching program with Thaddeus Lawrence, and uh, as a part of that program, he asked me to make goals for 2021. This was December 2020, and uh, I made my goals. And then he asked me a question, Ashish, how does that make you feel? And uh, I said, I don't, I don't feel anything. And he said, What does that tell you about yourself? I said, I don't know. And then he asked me to write, not type, write every single day, answer to these five questions. And friends, I journaled, uh, you know, uh, for over a month. And that was such a powerful way to get in touch with my feelings. Uh, and it completely opened a uh, very uh, different world for me. And I, uh, whatever I invested in that coaching program, I made 12x of that in one year's time. Uh, so this really uh, paid very, very well for me. Uh, and in this workshop that we do, we also talk about today, I won't have the time to go through the SCARF model, but in the workshop, we talk about the SCARF model, which is uh, factors like status, uh, certainty, um, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness, how they impact our emotions and uh, the emotions of other people. So once you understand this SCARF model, you will be able to understand your own emotions very well and how the how it impacts the people around you also, you know. Uh, so one thing is, uh, I'll maybe talk a little bit about is uncertainty. Uh, our mind craves for uh, certainty and whenever there is uncertainty in the environment, it completely gets fused, you know, and like a bulb gets fused, the brain also gets fused. Uh, so think it in terms of the organizational context, you know, if you don't have clarity or your teammate does not have clarity on what he's supposed to do. So suppose, imagine this is a newcomer in the organization. He's not certain about what he's supposed to do. How will he feel? You know, it's amazing, uh, you know, this certainty and uncertainty, how it plays havoc with our mind, status, uh, relatedness, autonomy, a lot of these we uh, dive deep into. And in case you are interested in doing your own research, you can look up this book uh, by David uh, Scarf, uh, Dr. David Rock, uh, Brains at Work. Uh, you can look up that book. And the next one is understanding ego, you know. Uh, ego is uh, the construct we have about ourselves. Answering the question, who are you or who am I, appears to be simple, but actually what it reveals is what we think about ourselves. It shares with us the story we have uh, created for us. And that story uh, determines the way we interact with the world around us. And, uh, you know, this separates us. I believe that I'm different from other people because of the body I have, you know, and there is an, uh, uh, who am I? I am this body, you know, this person I can see, this person I can touch. So that is what I realize I am. And, you know, that this then separates me everybody else because then there is somebody, somebody, uh, somebody else out there. Uh, so it creates that. And then it can disempower or empower us. And I'll share this by way of an example. And, uh, we always put labels uh, and these labels create the story for us so that label could be a name you know so by the name you get to know the person's religion you get to know the person's caste you get to know the person's social status so if your surname is Ambani or Haldiram you know then you know 
uh, what they say. And then, you know, with the name comes responsibility. Um, uh, that, you know, Bhare Ghar Me Toh Aisa Nii Hota. Ya Bhari Company Me Toh Aisa Nii Hota. Or the religion, you know. So, uh, everything in my life may get determined by the religion. You know, the way I think, my beliefs uh, will all get, uh, or the hobby, or marital status. I'm a single, married, divorcee, widowed. Or, or the education. So people who have had certain education will, uh, you know, network accordingly. And so many, so many things, you know, uh, or the sexual orientation, whether you are uh, straight, uh, bisexual, or, you know, whatever else, or gender. So uh, girls don't uh, do like this. Girls don't giggle. Boys don't cry. Everything uh, in our life largely is determined by the labels we choose for ourselves. And if these labels empower us and help us go towards the goal we want to go, it is fine. But otherwise, they can be very, very limiting. And I'll share this uh, story about Edison uh, with you. And uh, this is also uh, a, a story which is uh, there in the resources that we share with you. So uh, briefly, I'll share because we're kind of running out of time. Um, one day, Thomas Edison comes back home. He's sent back home uh, by the teacher of his school with a sealed envelope. Uh, asking him to handle that sealed and hand over that sealed envelope to his mom, and uh, mom reads it, and mom uh, tells Edison that uh, the teacher says that you are a genius, and they don't have teachers good enough at the school to teach you at school, so I'll homeschool you now. And uh, Edison, being a kid, he doesn't understand. He's happy that he's going to be home. Mother is going to teach him, and uh, so on, one thing leads to the other, and he becomes the most famous scientist, inventor. Uh, and, you know, one day when after his mother passes away, he was uh, looking at his old papers and he comes across this letter, which his teacher had given. And he has actually never read that letter because the letter was only read by his mom. And uh, he reads the letter and he's shocked to see what the teacher had written. Any idea, if you have not heard this story, any idea what the teacher would have written in that Letter? Any guesses? Guesses anyone? Can't be trained. Okay. So in that letter, what the teacher had written. Thank you, Asmita. Uh, uh, what the teacher had written was uh, that uh, the exact words he had used was, uh, Edison is addled, he's confused. He can't think, he's dull, he's dumb, you know. He's so dumb that we can't teach him at school, okay. And uh, that is the reason uh, he was kicked out of the school. And so the label which the teacher put on Edison was that he's dumb. And that label could have sealed his life, right? If mother believed that label, that could have sealed his life. But the label which the mother gave was that he is a genius. Right? So my question to you is, what is the reality? So, you know, when I, in my coaching sessions, I ask people, what is the reality? Uh, or, or, you know, I people tell me, Ashish, you don't know what is the reality. You don't know the reality I'm facing. So I'm asking this question to you. Yeah, thank you, Venteshwara. What was the reality, whether Edison was dumb or genius? Please type D if you think he was dumb. What is the reality in this case? Or G if you think he was a genius? Quickly, please. We have a lot more to cover in like 30 minutes remaining. Bobel says he was a genius. Okay. Richard says he was a genius. Okay. Anybody else? Middle way. Okay. So let's look at it this way. You know, in the teacher's reality. Okay, Satya. Teacher not. Thank you, Venkata. Thank you, Venkata. You become what you believe. Very beautiful, Asmita. You know, in Upanishads, they say, Yatha drishti, tatha srishti. The, uh, you know, the, when you change the way you look at things, the way the things you look at change. Uh, so, uh, look at it in your own context. You know, are we living my life thinking that I am dumb or genius? Am I leading my life 
according to the opinion of people around me or I am leading my life according to the opinion I have of myself. Uh, you know, it is too old. We are at that stage where we can't go back to our mother and ask mother to think of us and treat us as genius. But can we do that favor to ourselves and start treating it, uh, treating ourselves as genius and create a different uh, reality uh, according to that? Uh, so this is ego, the label we give ourselves. So what are the labels are we giving ourselves? Am I thin? I am fat? I am dark? I am ugly? Or I am genius? I am beautiful? I am a contributor? I am a giver or a taker? So this is what the labels, which is about ego identification is. And the last, uh, so the seventh session that we do is sharpen the X. And, uh, you know, this is uh, a story, a small story I'll share with you quickly. Um, is about uh, a woodcutter who had a large area of forest to clear. And he's very tired, it's hot, and you know uh, there's a lot more work to be driven and done. And there's one passerby who uh, sees him you know, struggling with the work that he's doing. And he says that, why don't you take some rest and why don't you sharpen your ax so that you will be able to cut trees faster? But he says, don't, he shouts back at the observer passerby. And he says, can't you see I'm so busy? There is so much work I need to do. And that in a story, it looks very simple, but that sadly is the, uh, you know, fact with many of the people uh, that, uh, you know, who are around us, we are so busy to work on ourselves in improving ourselves in investing in our own selves, uh, which is sharpening the ax. Uh, that, uh, you know, we we uh, keep working with a blunt mind or, uh, you know, uh, bodies which are not optimally situated for delivering peak performance. And there is this beautiful, uh, uh, you know, book, Becoming a Corporate Athlete, in which, uh, you know, the author says that there are four things uh, that corporate athletes, corporate professionals need to do. One is work on their physical capacity, you know, be physically fit. Uh, and then work on your emotions, ability to manage your emotions. Like I was talking about an executive who was suspended because he could not, uh, he misbehaved when he was angry. De developing, investing in our mental capacity, like all of you have taken out time to develop in your intellectual development. And then the fourth one is spiritual capacity. Very, very important, you know. Uh, so all of these we need to work on. Uh, our education system mostly focuses on developing the mental capacity at the uh, peril of ignoring physical health or emotional capacity. And that is why we have this very tragic uh, cases like the young chartered accountant uh, in Ernst and Young, who poor girl had to uh, commit suicide, uh, you know, because she could not handle the pressure, uh, could not handle the emotions which came with that pressure. And then the spiritual capacity, you know, so these are, this is the entire package which we need to work on to have sustainable success, year on year success, not short term success. Uh, you know, the, the corporate life uh, or our life is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So when we work on all these aspects, it becomes uh, uh, a sustainable happiness, sustainable performance. Uh, and for that, we need to commit to learning, which is what you have done. And the last session in the workshop is making an action plan. And I'll pause here uh, for two minutes for you to quickly reflect on what has been your takeaway from the session today. What is it that you have liked? Uh, what is it that appealed to you? What is it that you will implement in your life uh, beginning now? So take two minutes is uh, 5.53 by my watch, 5.55 we will resume. And if something comes up for you, please share in the chat. Hard work, thank you, Bamil. Whatever comes up from you, uh, I'll do a quick recap of the uh, seven attributes of the mindset shifts that we need to make. Develop a champion's mindset, which is uh, you know focusing on what we can control. Uh, then the, the second one is creating a success blueprint for ourselves. Third is managing time, focusing on quadrant two, reducing quadrant three. Then we spoke about compassionate leadership, how compassionate leadership leads to better productivity, not loss of productivity. And we saw a couple of case studies around that. Um, reconsider my present situation. Okay, thank you, Venteshwara. So what have been your 
controlling the controllable creates a build the network. Yeah, very nice. Emotional intelligence. Very nice. Very nice, Satya. So we'll move on. And uh, uh, anyway, you will have this uh, recording with you. Uh, so the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, and once you implement, make these mindset, mindset shifts, your life will keep getting better and better every day in every way. That is my promise to you. Uh, so this is there is a virtuous upward spiral which is created when you start working on these habits and your life moves up. So what I would like to also request is that the next 30 minutes is for those people who are... Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, sure, sure, Asmita. Uh, the next 30 minutes is for those who want to take their life to the next level by investing time uh, into a uh, uh, two-month, uh, eight sessions workshop that we have put together. So those who have other commitments can leave. And those who are staying on and would like to know more about the workshop, uh, please give me permission to share the details of the workshop by typing P in the chat box. Please type P in the chat box if I have your permission to share the details of the workshop, which will help you elevate your life to the next level. Thank you, Satya. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Venkateshwara. Friends, I request response from everyone. Please share. Thank you, Anjana. So for those who are interested in knowing more about the workshop, here are the details of the workshop for you. There are two options you have. One is uh, to go at 10 kilometers an hour, another one to go super fast. And the next 30 minutes is for those who want to go super fast and accelerate their success. Those of you, I assume the, the ones who are here in the session now are uh, ready to accelerate their success and uh, hence I'm sharing the details of the Becoming a Trailblazing Leader workshop. And I mentioned earlier that that was Harvard Business Review study that uh, leaders are in short supply. And this is Con Ferry study which says that uh, there is a leadership shortage. Uh, this is a burning discussion amongst the HR folks in the corporates. How do we build the leadership pipeline? I do a lot of work in that area uh, with my clients. So I know uh, firsthand about the leadership shortage. And this is uh, Warren Buffet, one of the top 10 people, one of the top 10 richest people in the world uh, who started out selling uh, uh, newspapers on his bicycle. He says the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you will earn. Uh, who knows this better than someone who has learned about investing in stock markets and uh, is today worth more than $100 billion. Self-made billionaire, top 10 richest people in the world. So friends, the, the being a corporate professional myself, I'm very conscious of delivering high return on investment. And when it comes on return on investment, there are two things you need to invest. One is time and one is money. But before I talk about that, let us quickly recap uh, what is it that this program is going to talk about. Developing a champion's mindset, focusing on what we can control in our lives, undiscover, uh, uh, uncovering the limiting beliefs that hold us back, the case studies. So th th in this entire program, uh, it's more like a workshop where we'll be doing a lot of work. There'll be uh, workbooks, uh, uh, you know, discussions, etc. Creating the success blueprint, imagining what we would like our mind to be, using the full potential of our brain, uh, of our mind, uh, to create success in our lives, mastering time management. Uh, you know, we are all very conscious of the way we spend our money, but many people are not conscious of how they spend their time. And so this one is about mastering time management. And if we can allot our uh, time, this, we can be careful about time the same way we are careful about our money, then our life can completely transform. Next one, compassionate leadership, a 360 degree view on compassionate leadership, how it can make us become happier, better leader, can be, make our teams more productive, about how to manage our emotions, become happier, 
uh, and you know managing difficult emotions like anger, uh, addictions, and becoming happier. Then we talked about the labels, the labels we put on ourselves, the labels we put on others, becoming aware of these labels and how they impact our performance. And the last one, very powerful one, is the sharpening the X, how to get into that virtuous upward spiral of growth and making an action plan. This is the last session. So this is an eight session package that we have put together. And, uh, uh, you know, this program will pay uh, for itself many times more. That's my promise to you. This is the fourth time uh, we are running this program. Uh, this is one of the few programs in Mindful Living that we are running for the fourth time. And uh, I'm very sure uh, that this will deliver massive value to you. This is the participant feedback that 93% of the previous participants have found becoming a trailblazing leader program valuable use of their time. And these are some testimonials. Uh, some uh, So Jatin is there in this session. Jatin, would you like to, are you there uh, still? Yeah, would you like to share with everybody uh, your experience of uh, becoming a trailblazing leader program? Jatin is from our first batch of uh, trailblazing leader. Uh, Jatin, whenever you're comfortable, just give me a shout out and we'd like to hear from you. And uh, Vaibhav, Shalini, Shruti, Gunjan, Dr. Jasbir, uh, many, many testimonials. So when you uh, invest uh, in the BTL program, you know, think of uh, the financial freedom it can bring you and the growth that it can bring you and how it can secure uh, your family's future. So the time investment that is required is 12 hours, uh, one and a half hours each uh, over eight Sundays starting 3rd of November. 3rd, 10th, 17th, and 24th November, and uh, on 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd December. So this finishes well before your Christmas holidays and empowers you with a solid, uh, uh, you know, mindset shift to make the most of your 2025, to make 2025 better than 2024. And the fees for this program is uh, a very nominal fees. And what I would like you to urge you is what you are losing, uh, uh, you know, by not investing in this, you know, and uh, the new mindset that you will create will pay for itself many, many times more. Um, and uh, the fees is a very nominal 4999 for the eight sessions. And uh, first time I did this program was in 2005. And that time I had paid 20,000 rupees, not exactly the same program, but similar one. And today it's coming to you um, 20 years later, uh, nearly 20 years later for a fraction of that price. And for those who may want to uh, explore this deeper and may want to engage uh, with me on one-to-one -one coaching, for a single session, it will be 9,999 rupees. And if you would like to sign up for a five-session coaching package, it will be 14,999 rupees, which is a steal because my uh, single hour of coaching is about $100. So here you get five hours of coaching, which is worth $500, plus eight sessions for merely uh, 14,999 rupees. So this is clearly a no-brainer. And for those who take action, now, I love people who like to take action. There is a special offer. Those who sign up for the coaching package, which is the package B or C, uh, 9,999 or 14,999, get this very beautiful, you know, there's the same t-shirt I'm wearing, different color, uh, which is worth 1,400 rupees. That comes uh, as a gift to you for those who sign up today for the uh, coaching package. Uh, so sharing the packages once again, the package A is eight sessions for 4,999. Package B is eight sessions uh, with one coaching session and package C is eight sessions plus five coaching sessions. And uh, you don't need to pay the entire amount. You can reserve uh, your seat by just paying 499 today. And you can let us know that which package you are going for, A, B, or C. So just share the screenshot with us and let us know which package you will you are going for. And the balance amount you can pay before the program actually starts. Uh, you can remit the fees uh, by uh, Google Pay or Paytm uh, on this number and uh, let us know, share the screenshot with us. 
uh, the sessions will be recorded like this one. And even in case you miss any session, the recording will be shared in the group uh, so that you can attend the session. And, uh, you know, we can connect one to one in case you have any doubts. As I said, this is a program which is very rich in resources. You will get participant workbooks. You will have case studies to work on. Uh, you will have assignments, exercises, handouts, uh, and a lot of reference material, uh, including the one for this session that will come to you by way of emails. And a very attractive certificate of completion, which you can uh, share on your social media, which adds to your profile. And, uh, you know, this is something I have shared in case you miss any session, you can always uh, get the uh, Zoom recording. Uh, this is the fourth uh, workshop we are doing in last two years. Uh, next one will be in 2025. The next 2025 calendar I'm still making, so I'm not sure when the next one is going to be. Uh, so, but I would urge you not to wait for the next one, but to sign for this one so that you can uh, kick off your 2025 on a very strong note. Uh, sharing the fee structure once again, package A for $4,999, package B with one coaching session for $9,999, and package C with five coaching sessions for $14,999, which is clearly a steal. And uh, sharing the uh, coordinates for payment once again. And once you uh, make this shift, uh, you will find that over a period of time, there are, uh, you know, initially the changes may be subtle, but they have a compounding effect. And over a period of time, you're completely, your life is taken to a different level. And in case you don't, uh, then it uh, things don't remain the same. They go down because uh, relatively and sometimes really uh, because others are investing and they are getting ahead and, you know, you get left behind. And the benefits are in all areas of life, better health, better income, more happiness, more better relationships, um, and more success. And you become a part of the Mindful Living community in case you already are not where uh, we host wonderful speakers uh, who talk, who, who are the very best in their respective fields. So if achieving high position and increasing your well-being of your family is important for you, please go ahead and reserve your seat in the program by paying 499 rupees. Uh, and uh, this program, I must say, is for those who are sincere about improving their quality of life for their sake and for the sake of your family uh, who, who believes in yourself, you know, because many people have, many participants have gone through this program and they have benefits. So, but what you need is whether you believe in yourself and whether you are able to invest that time and that money uh, to take your uh, life to the uh, next level. We take very few participants. We restrict the number of participants into the workshop uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, we can offer uh, quality and especially because this one has a coaching offer also with it. Uh, we really keep the number of participants very restricted. So please hurry up and join at the earliest. Uh, but I must share with you that the real benefits come when you uh, not sign up, not only sign up for the workshop, but when you really do the work. When you do the work, then everything else falls in place. Uh, in case you would like to make a bank transfer, uh, these are the bank account details. This will also be, uh, as I shared, we'll be sharing the recording video and there you can catch up once again or you can take a screenshot right now. And uh, the extra bonus for those who go for package uh, A, which is 8, 000, uh, 4 ,999 rupees for eight sessions, is that you get the complimentary copy of my book, uh, Beyond Limits, which is uh, now, today, as of today, available internationally, but will be available in India in the coming week. Uh, so for those who go for package A, uh, they get this uh, gift, a personally signed copy of this book, Beyond Limits, which is getting great reviews. Uh, it is a compilation of stories which have inspired me in my life, some of which I have mentioned about in the session today. And uh, so now we will open it, uh, this up for question and answers. And, uh, you know, happy to take any questions and comments that you may have about this program.
So happy to hear from you whenever you have a question. And uh, these are the resources which we'll be emailing you. So please stay tuned uh, to your emails. There will be a mail coming to you from Vaishnavi, uh, which will have these links. And uh, uh, this first video is about uh, the number one habit of billionaires, uh, which is by Mel Robbins, which talks, which has a very beautiful video about um, uh, Mel Robbins, you know, backed by science on how visualization is so important. Uh, thank you, Anjana, for your message. We'll connect. And um, uh, the Thomas Edison video, which I spoke about, very beautiful small movie, uh, the Big Rock, uh, Stephen Covey's video, and the Giver Gains video, which is, uh, you know, on these. So these are the links which we'll share with you. And once you invest in this Becoming a Trailblazing Leader program, your life will completely take off to a new level. And this is the best time to invest. India is poised for great opportunities uh, rather than worry about the uncertainties which are there. Invest in your learning, building your character, building your leadership, and make the most of the next 23 years uh, from now till 2047 when you know uh, the India will complete 100 years of independence and will be the third largest economy and uh, a developed nation. Uh, so friends, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much uh, for your patience, for being enthusiastic and engaged learners. Uh, for last uh, one minute, I'm happy to take any questions or comments from you uh, and then we'll bring the session to a close. Ashish, Venkateshwar, Manoj, Naveen, Jatin, Richard, anyone? Jatin, we can't hear you. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir. Hi, good evening, Jatin. How are you? Uh, absolutely fine, sir. How are you doing, sir? Excellent, uh, excellent. Will you, be, uh, yeah, will you like to share your experience? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first of all, sir, uh, it's a pleasure attending any of your uh, sessions, sir. So thank you so much for your valuable insights and your uh, valuable time, sir. Thank and I, I still remember I attended your uh, first uh, Trailblazing Leader program. Yes, uh, way yes. back in 2022, sir. And yeah. uh, I can tell you, sir, uh, I was really fortunate to attend that program. And uh, my life really changed after that. And thank you so much to your uh, uh, great insights and the learning that you imparted in that program, sir. Thank you. And, thank you. and uh, at the same time, sir, I would like to congratulate on your new book, sir, uh, Beyond you. Limits. And uh, definitely, I'm looking forward to buy that and would love to have a signed copy of yours, sir. Uh, uh, in due time, sir. Thank you. And Jatin, would you like to share how your life actually changed after attending the program? Uh, actually, sir, uh, just to share with you that uh, sometimes what, what happens is ki we, we start uh, judging uh, 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 that the amount is so and so, but we don't understand the underlying values and underlying insights or under, underlying uh, learnings that we get from a coach like you, sir. Okay, so uh, when I attended that course, I was actually in a state of anxiety, stress, and a uh, lot of tensions and negativity at that time. I was going through some tough time at uh, during those days, sir. But fortunately, I found you through the community, and uh, I was uh, part of that uh, uh, course, sir. And I can tell you, sir, from that time, my perspective towards life changed, actually. And, uh, and all the anxiety, stress, uh, which used to be... The second uh, trait I had has uh, almost gone away. Still, you get tense sometimes. There, there are a moment of there are moments of negativity or sadness, but uh, I I can tell you that those things have long gone back, sir. And yeah. it was it it is a long journey, sir. Uh, your course was the start of all the changes that I have been going through from last uh, close to two years now, sir. Thank you, thank you. And Jadin, would you and, like and to I can tell you, sir, the course was one thing. But the community meet at Delhi, that entirely changed everything. When I met uh, five of uh, you, uh, yeah. all the senior people, and I being the youngest one there, and uh, uh, listening to the people' uh, wisdoms in that meeting, sir, was uh, like eye opener and uh, amazing for me. 
ठीक है और आज भी मैं उनसे बात करता हूँ एंड यू गेट सो मच टू लर्न फ्रॉम देम एक्चुअली सर मतलब कम्युनिटी कम्युनिटी को भी हम ना इग्नोर नहीं कर सकते मैं ये कहना चाह रहा हूँ मतलब कोर्स की वैल्यू तो अपनी जगह है ही है सर नो डाउट अबाउट इट बट वेन यू गेट टू लर्न फ्रॉम अदर पीपल द कम्युनिटी पीपल एंड यू गेट टू नो देम ऑल्सो दैट इज इन इट सेल्फ इज अ बिग लर्निंग फ्रॉम दो स्टार्स फ्रॉम दो एक्सपीरियंस पर्सनल फ्रॉम देयर ओन एक्सपीरियंसिस सर Thank you, thank you for sharing that, Jatin. What Jatin is talking about the community meets that we have from time to time when I travel uh, to different cities. We meet up, we organize mindful living community meets, and one of those meets Jatin attended, and something happened in that meet which gave him a completely different perspective, and he became an entrepreneur after that, and he is now running a very successful company of his own. Uh, so that is what. Thank you, thank you for sharing that, Jatin. and uh, if there is no more question or no more comments we'll be very happy to draw the session to a close now thank you once again for taking out time and joining us uh, have a happy saturday happy weekend and a productive week ahead thank you everyone thank you thank you richard